you love your gadgets, it's a great time to be alive. There are new products every few months. And what's driving this advance of electronics? The computer revolution. All these have chips in them. Since the first machines in the 1940s, computer circuitry has been continually advancing. Computer chips, for example, have doubled in power or halved in price every couple of years. But could this computer revolution soon end? The doubling's been going on for five decades now. It's even got a name, Moore's Law. First noted by Silicon Valley guru, Gordon Moore, back in the 1970s. The thing that's driven Moore's Law is manufacturer's ability to etch ever smaller electronic components on computer chips. But things have got so small now, the finite size of atoms is getting in the way. So to keep the law going, researchers are going to have to come up with clever new technologies. We went to IBM in California to see how they're planning to keep the march of technology going. Dum, 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 dum. Computer memory is a good example of Moore's law at work. This is one of today's hard drives. It holds a thousand gigabytes. But back in the 1950s, this was the equivalent. It didn't store much. This original disk drive could only store five megabits of data. Five megabits? And it required disks 24 inches in diameter and needed 50 disks. But Moore's law has relentlessly increased memory. So that monstrous thing yeah. is what we've compressed down into sort of today's hard drives, essentially. That's exactly right. What that means is these magnetic regions in the magnetic film on the disk are approximately a billion times smaller today than 50 years ago in this very first disk drive. But things can't be shrunk much more. We have to look in new directions to keep the revolution rolling. That's what this $8 million contraption is doing. This is an incredible machine, the only one of its kind in the world. It can deposit a layer of material on a wafer like this. It's not a micron thick, not a nanometer thick, just one atom thick, one atom. And it's as automated as your microwave oven. You just pop the sample in here, a series of robotic arms carries it through all the chambers in the machine, depositing the atoms a few hours later, out it pops, fully cooked. Bo, bo, do it, do it. Bo. it allows researchers to tailor make radically new types of computer chips. We essentially can put atoms where we wish to put them. And what we hope to find then by doing this, by forming materials with certain functions, certain properties that are basically useful technologically. For example, to build new types of memory devices, new types of logic devices, new forms of communications. So a wide range of applications. They're working on an ingenious new chip they've called racetrack memory. Think of it in terms of real estate. On a conventional chip, everything's low rise, etched just on the surface of the silicon. Now when cities become overcrowded, they build up. Well, racetrack memory does the same thing on the surface of the silicon wafer. And so essentially all the space above the silicon wafer is completely unused. So what we want to do is build devices that can take advantage of that, essentially that unused terrain in the third dimension. For racetrack memory, a multitude of nanowires grow out of the chip like a forest. Information is stored in those, dramatically increasing memory capacity. Racetrack memory will be more efficient than the chips in current devices, and much, much faster. So it'll be like a billion times faster than this drive, approximately. 